how do you know yours is the right one? Well, where do you think human beings come from? Human beings come from an evolution. That first started with sapiens, sapiens, homo sapiens, and then eventually we progress in a certain area. And you saw that happen? Uh, we can find evidence. No, you. I'm talking about you. Have you seen God? Why, okay, why do I need to see something to prove Well, that's how science works, my friend. No, it's not. Actually, no, it's Well, science not. is based upon you empirical observation, yeah. No, it's not. Do you want me to tell what science is based on? Empirical observation. And then you make a hypothesis, and then you test your hypothesis. Now, if you've come up with your own scientific method, I'm, you know, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll back down. But last time I checked, my friend, that is the scientific method. You have to empirically be able to see something so that you can test your hypothesis. So I, I mean, I thought that was like 101. So that is Wait, based hold on, hold on, hold on. we've never seen God. So earlier, this lady talked to you about science. You're like, oh, yes, science is right. And yeah, so science is right, yeah. But now you're saying it's not normal. I didn't say science is wrong. I said science said is empirical. Wrong. I said what he said about science is wrong. That's not science. What's that, ma'am? You said we have to see something in order to be able to test it, right? Yep. How, we've, we've never seen God. Science, or God is not proven scientifically, ma'am. God is, God is a spirit. That's what the Bible says. Okay. God is not proven scientifically. Okay. God is, God is a spirit. That's why there's a barrier between the supernatural. There's not a barrier, my friend, because we're made in God's image. See, there's no barrier between God and his creation. Now, God is different than his creation. That is a barrier. What's that? Now, my man, I wanted to ask you something real quick. Can you prove to us that you exist? Go ahead. You can't prove that, can't that you prove exist? That you exist. I can say, oh, this is all in the matrix. Oh, this is all... You can't matrix. prove that I exist? No, I can't. So how can you do science? How can I do science? Wait a minute, my man. Based upon what we see, we can come to a... Based upon what we see, he says, but I can't be sure that what I see even exists. Exactly. What do you mean exactly, my friend? That makes no sense. So how can you believe... How can you say, hey, listen, I believe that science tells us this, but I believe that what I see with my eyes could also be completely false. I could just be in the matrix. Who fucking knows? Well, I know. Oh, you know? You know and you know, you know. Of you know course I know. Fact, yeah. You're not in the matrix. Yes. What if it's so perfectly replicated that you would have no intention and no idea about being in the matrix? That's a great question. It's kind of fun you know to kind what? of hypothesize, isn't it? It's kind of fun to like theorize about like that, God. you know? I mean, that's why we like the matrix. That's why it's a cool movie. You're like, man, I mean, that is that me? Am I, am I really some kind of brain in a vat hooked up in Dallas, Texas right now and is sending these little signals telling me I'm in Las Cruz? I mean, that's cool, right? But God, whenever so he creates us... as to why that isn't true. Because whenever God creates us in his image and really the reality... So claiming that there's a God. Correct? Wow, this guy who doesn't like to be interrupted sure interrupts a lot. Well, yeah, because you're interrupting me. Okay, now what I'm saying so, is this... I would say it's only fair. So now okay. you don't like that I'm interrupting you. Every what? time you're about to talk. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do this, okay? So what, what we're trying to say, my friends, is this, okay? Whenever God creates us in his image and he creates reality, there's a thing called the law of correspondence. Okay, what that means, my friend, is that I know that my reality, my truth, whatever I see, whatever, the way I live, it corresponds to the world out there. There's a correspondence there. In other words, God's not going to trick us. God's not trying to, to dupe us, okay? And we know that, and that's why you don't live that way. Go and tell your math professor whenever you get a 90 on a test. Go and tell your math math professor, yeah, but, but professor, I mean, you say I missed, let's say, one problem right here. But, but listen, I mean, math is always changing because there's no such thing as objective truth, professor. I mean, 2 plus 2 could equal 5 tomorrow, professor. That's the kind of universe you're trying to set up. That's when not the universe that, that we live in. See, we don't live in that kind of universe. That I got a 90 on. I was going based upon the standards and rules that they set for me. I guess those rules may change and actually what they are. When I was taking that test, they gave me those rules that I should follow. Now, say I didn't know those rules, well, I got it wrong. See, that's what I was saying earlier, though. You kind of just like go with whatever the flow is. I mean, as opposed to standing on an objective truth, objective reality, there is and saying, no listen. objective morality. Is that true? Okay. That's what I see as true. Is there objective truth? Is there objective so, truth? No, no, no. Let me assume something. Say all the truth. Would you say the Bible is 100% correct? Of course. So you would say that the earth is only a couple thousand years old? That's not what the Bible That's teaches, sir. Says. That's not what it teaches. It doesn't say that either. Yes, it does. Show me where. Give me a chapter and verse. You can Google it if you want to. I don't have the fucking Bible memorized to you. Well, you Google it. Google it. Okay, but the Bible does not teach that, my friend. That's what I'm trying to say. So the Bible does teach racism. The Bible does not teach racism. The Actually, Bible, the Bible shows that every human being is made in God's image. Therefore, every human being has equal worth, dignity, and value, regardless of your race, regardless so of you're in the womb or outside the womb. The yeah, they, the of course. As an excuse for 
slavery. Of course they did. Just like Trump today says he's a Christian and he's not. They try to use it to, to basically try to promote their own agenda. But just because somebody uses something and they use it out of context and they use it incorrectly, that does not mean that this right here is it loses credibility. Does that make sense? I mean, if like like people always, I mean, think about politicians all the time. They try to, like nowadays, you hear all the politicians saying, oh, I promote Islam. I, I'm pro-Islam. But at the end of the day, they're really not. They just know that that's going to get them votes. I mean, we all know that, right? I think we all know that. People try to use things to get their own way, to promote their own agenda. Does that make sense, my man? Okay, tell me if I'm, tell me if you're confused today, okay? Now, that's why we can come out here. And again, I've heard some really strange things out of this guy's mouth today, unfortunately. Because I like the guy. I mean, he's probably a friendly guy. I mean, I could see us like sitting down, having coffee and stuff. But at the end of the day, he says there's no such thing as objective truth. But he wants to make a lot of objective truth claims. Okay, that's the kind of guy I'm going to be like, what are you talking about? And then he says, yeah, but we could also be a brain in a vat in Dallas, Texas. You don't know anything's real. How can I sit down and actually have a, a good conversation with a guy like that? And I like the guy. I do. How are you, ma'am? So my, my friends, okay, the reason we come out here, and then I'll get a question. The reason we come out here is because I was once in your shoes. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm not a post you. I'm not your enemy. But what I'm saying is this. I was once brainwashed also. It took Christ coming giving me a new mind. That's what it took. Okay, Christ came and gave me a new mind. He came and he, he opened up the truth of his word to me. That I could see, you know what? God is the one who, who gives us a new life. God saves to the uttermost. That God can save you in Christ today. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Now, ma'am, did you have a question? Thank you for waiting. Okay, any other questions out there before we go to the next topic? Yes, sir. In what sense? Well, whenever I come out here, you know, I, I always try to learn from the people I engage. And so in that sense, you know, I try to always, I guess you could call me a student in that sense. I'm a learner. I want to hear from you also. No, I'm just curious because you say you're from the Clovis, right? Well, no, I come from El Paso. Oh, but you said you came from Clovis. I lived in Clovis. I grew up in Clovis. Yep. Oh, y'all are west side? Okay, I wish I lived on the west side. It would be a shorter drive. Yep. Did y'all go to UTEP at all? No, we're right here. Hey, that's good. That's all right. That's fine. Yeah, and I'm get you know that's that that's that's God's decree that you came out. And my friends, that's another thing to think about. It's God's decree that you're actually hearing the word of God being preached today. You know that you're actually hearing about some things that you're not going to hear in class. Like what is true? You're not going to hear about truth in class. Trust me. The only thing you'll hear about in class when it comes to truth is there is no truth. Even though they give you 16 weeks filled with things that are truth claims, right? You probably see that. What's that? Oh yeah, all the time. All the time. They love me over there. You said no, ma'am. I've seen Fifth Ave. I know you. What? They would do that? But they tell me they're good. On on Fit Fam? Oh man. Now now you know why that is. Because I preach truth. I preach truth. Okay, that's what happens. And you know what? The Bible says I can rejoice. Whenever they say all kinds of weird and bad things about me. No, well, that, well they'll come into public, sir. Yep. So whenever you come into public, my friends, you lose all anonymity. But what we do today is we preach Christ. Now, is anybody, is anybody out here, okay, what the Bible says is that apart from Christ, unless you believe in Christ or obey the word of Christ, okay, it says the word of the wrath of God abides on people today. What's up, my man? Okay, sure, I'll, I'll point it the other way. Okay. Okay, that's fair. Now, why would you say that? Well, I mean, these people here, like, they're going about their day. Yeah. It's just kind of your tone. Like, okay. I, I, I'm a Christian myself, and I, I agree, like, that... People should hear the gospel. And people should hear cool, the cool, thanks. Yeah, but you have to approach it in a gracious way. You have to like make conversation with these people. I mean, oh, so you don't like the preacher? It's not that. The, it's not that the preaching is bad. Okay. But coming from like a previous non-believer standpoint, uh -huh. these people are, are going to be susceptible to open to hearing about you. It's a great question. Especially yeah. because they're going to feel like they're under attack. So, yeah. Well, ladies, do you feel attacked? 
Not, not not attack per se. Okay. Now, yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Because now, now, if you mean now, now, tell me if I'm wrong, okay? Now, do you mean like your your ideology is under attack? Your beliefs are under attack? Your, I was hurting your feelings. I'm so sorry. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I said that about you. Oh yeah, well he is a hypocrite. Yeah. So, is that what you meant? Yeah, I mean. Oh okay. So don't call people hypocrites. Even like. Well, now, now what is a hypocrite? Two faced It means two faced So that's what he was. He was two faced the man here was two-faced, okay? And so actually, if you think about it, I was just judging with righteous judgment. Because, because you know, a lot of times on, you know, students, a lot of times, you know what they say? You shouldn't judge. But that's not what Christ teaches. Christ says don't judge with, with a different standard, okay? Whenever we come out here, we're talking about truth. And we're saying, listen, you need to be reconciled to God through Christ. That's the only way to be right with God is through Jesus Christ. Because Christ himself, he, when, when Christ goes to the cross, my friends, the Bible says Christ was crushed. And he was crushed so that those who come to him in faith can be delivered from the wrath of God. But here's, here's, here's the other thing to this, okay? The Bible says this, repent and believe. Now, if you don't repent, though, now repentance is when you turn from sin. It's when you turn to God. That's good news. When you, when you actually stop, when you stop and you say, you know what? I now see Christ in all his glory and all his beauty and all his majesty. And I don't want to sin anymore. And I come to Christ in faith. See, that's what happened to me. That's what happened. I mean, every every person who's actually been born again, it's happened to them. And, and I can know, you know, I know for a fact, it can happen to anybody out here. I mean, if it happened to me, it can happen to anybody. If God has saved me, he can save anybody. I was probably a worse sinner than you. I, just, I bet I was. I just think that, like, when God... It's kind of like that story where God went to the well and I mean, Jesus went to the well. Right, right, right. That woman. Right, right. Now, now that's had, one story. Yes, that's one story. Right? But in that story, he, he went to an outcasted person and right? spoke to her and told her her life story. And he showed her love and he yes, showed her grace. And I do that all the time. He but he also image. went, do you remember when he went and preached and they tried to stone him the first time he preached? Did y'all know that? The first time Christ actually preached, they tried to throw him off a cliff. Did y'all know that? They try to throw him off a cliff. Okay. So you see there's a difference there as far as... Now, I go and talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, you're right, but I also stand up and preach like Christ did. And a lot of times, you're going to get the same thing. Now, does everybody... Did everybody like Christ whenever he was alive? His mom did. His mom, yeah, call my mom. She okay, loves me. That's, my mom loves me. You can't make a comparison. And I love her. I got a great mom. You can't make a comparison to... <laughs> You needing to preach just because Jesus. Well, actually, the Bible says imitate Christ. See, we're to imitate Paul as Paul imitated Christ. Paul's another guy. It you does know? say to imitate Christ. Right. right. That's what we're doing. We're imitating and Christ. You should imitate Christ more through grace and through love. I agree. Amen. I always want to have more grace and love, but it doesn't mean you can't preach and call things out as they are. Because Christ, remember what Christ says. He came not to bring peace, but a sword. Because the things that he says is they are going to divide things. They're going to stir things up. Why? Because the truth always does. I mean, we don't like it whenever someone tells us the truth if we don't agree with it. If it, you know, if we're saying, wait a minute, are you telling me there's a God? Here's the word, who actually hates me? Yeah. If you're apart from Christ. Now, how many of you have heard that? That there the God of the universe hates you unless you're in Christ. Now I can say that because God Himself has said that. Yeah. Um, we're, we're in Scripture. To say Psalm that. five five. You got your Bible? I don't. Okay, let's read it. Ready? Okay. You are not a God who delights in wickedness. The worst thing you could ever, the most terrifying thing you could ever tell a human being is that God is not a God who delights in wickedness. But look what it says. Okay. Evil may may not dwell with you. The boastful shall not stand before your eyes. You hate. Right there, I underlined it. Look, you hate all evildoers. In what context is that? That's what I'm reading the whole thing see, so you can see, see the content. Let me read the next part. You destroy those who speak lies. God destroys those who speak lies. Now, who out here has ever spoken a lie? I have. Now, how can I stand here and say, listen, God is not going to destroy me, even though the Bible says God destroys those who speak lies? Does that make, does that, now, sir, we'll save the ad hominems for later. Okay, this isn't a high school, 
Someone tell the guy in the back this is no longer high school. Okay, look, it's a college student. It's a college place now. All right? So, my friends, here's what Christ does, though. I'm not going to be destroyed because Christ on the cross was destroyed in my place. You see that? My sins fell upon Christ. So even though I can stand here and I can read what God's Word says, all those apart from Christ, God is going to destroy. God's going to cast them into hell. I'm not pleased about it. I'm not saying, yes, I can't wait for that day. But what I'm saying is this. God is a good God. God is a righteous God. That's why God destroys people in hell, because He's good. But the good news for you today, ma'am, is that Christ went to the cross for sinners. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise God. We can celebrate today. We can say Christ died for me. Christ paid for my sins. I was a liar. I was a deceiver, but Christ died for me. I have... I, well, no, he died for those... No, ma'am, that's actually not true. That's not true, ma'am. Christ died for those who have faith in him. He didn't die for everybody. Christ did not. Christ died for those who have faith in him. There's a condition there. The Bible says this, ma'am, have you ever heard this verse? I bet you have. I bet you've heard this one. Okay. It says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Have you heard that? That whoever believes in him, there's the condition. Whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. See, for God so loved those who believe in Christ. So the question is, my friends, how can I believe? If you're enslaved to sin today, how can you have such a heart that gives off sinning? It's God who does that work. See, God can do a work of grace in your heart today so that the God that you once hated, you will love. And the sin you once loved, you will hate. That's salvation. That's conversion. That's regeneration. Because I've been justified. Because I've been declared, I've been declared right with God. I've been made right with God. Therefore, therefore, I want to live my life for God. I want to praise God. I want to preach God. You see that? So again, I'm trying to tell you, students, I'm not... You know, by God's grace, you're going to see me a lot of times out here. And and you need to know this, okay? I didn't come to rile people up to make you my enemy or to, you know, do the, the shock and all and the, all this, to name call. That's not why I'm out here. I'm out here that you might know the truth about Jesus Christ because what you're learning in there is not true. What you're learning in there, you're being lied to. You're being manipulated. Now, I'm not saying you can't you can't do mathematics, but what I'm saying is that the the worldview of this of this institution is an unbelieving worldview. They're trying to explain things apart from God, and whenever you do that, you get off track, and it leads to my friends. Why is it that the suicide rates are so high in the country? Exactly. Why? Well, guess what? You came from a volcano. That's depressing. Oh, I thought it was pretty cool. But Why is that cool? Because it's a volcano. You know why that's depressing, ma'am? Because it means that life has no value. It means that if you kill yourself, who cares? It means that if you kill a human being, it means that it means that if you kill a human being, who cares? It means that if you rape a woman, who cares? She came from a volcano. Now tell me why it's wrong to rape a woman if we all came from a volcano. Go. Wait, wait. Okay, why is it wrong to rape a woman? If we all, yeah, why is that wrong? Now I can say it's wrong. I believe it's wrong. But according to somebody who thinks we all came from, from stardust and volcanoes and a primordial puddle of, of stew, tell me why it's wrong to rape somebody. Because you're taking away their freedom. So what? <laughs> well, you do that to moths all the time when you drive to school. You kill them. I don't drive to school. Okay. Have you ever killed, a uh, let's say, a, a fly? No. You never killed a fly? No. Have you ever driven a car? No. Ever? No. Do you eat, do you eat meat? No. Do you eat plants? You don't eat plants or meat. No. Now she's a liar. No, I eat from a tube. She says she doesn't eat plants or meat. Now that's an easy one, right? Somebody here is lying. I don't know. You tell me, my man. Good to see you again. Somebody, somebody out here is lying. But again, if we all came from volcanoes, who cares if we lie to one another? Right? Who cares? That's what I'm saying. Who cares if we rape one another? Who cares if we lie to one another? Who cares if we kill babies? If you're a mother and you kill your own baby, who cares? Because we all came from volcanoes. Uh, you're saying that Does everybody see the logic there? You say racism is wrong. I do too. But if you think that we all came from volcanoes, why is racism wrong? Hold on, I'm asking this way you think the... That's, I'm serious. I'm being dead serious. Can somebody answer that question? You got it? 
Objective? Objective moralism, where everybody has morals. Everybody does have morals. That's because we're made in God's image. You can do it that way. See, that's but why we know racism is wrong. Inherently, we know racism is wrong. Inherently, we know that murder is wrong because we're made in God's image. What I'm saying, though, is I can justify, I can base why racism, right, racism is wrong on the Bible. Empathy. Now, now, empathy, define empathy. I got a great idea. I got a great idea. Let's go over to him. Yeah. Really? Now, my pagan friend, I like your shirt. Okay, I don't know what it means, okay? Now, now what is empathy to you? I just told you, it's the ability to feel for others. Okay, did you hear him how, how he defined empathy? He defines empathy as the, the ability to feel Sir. for others. Sir, would you be willing to step down and have a civil conversation? Okay, now my question is this, my friends. No, we're non-discriminating, sir. We want everyone to hear the questions, okay? Sir, if you want to go talk to him, you're more than welcome to, but I'm going to do this, okay? Now, my friends, we want to talk about empathy today, okay? Now, my friend, do you believe in abortion? Do you believe that's acceptable? Yes. I believe that uh, a fetus is technically a parasite. No, I'm talking about, yeah, there it is. What kind of empathy is that? This man wants to talk empathy, but he wants to talk about fetuses being a parasite. It's empathy for Wow. Wow, my friend, at least you're showing your heart today. Hey, we should all be empathetic. Unless they're in the womb, and then, hey man, they're just like bugs. Me, Why aren't you, my friend, are you empathetic towards bugs? How do you feel about a because our friend, where is she? Um, 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 she's, she's empathetic towards bugs, right? Hallelujah, brother. I thought Amen. you said you don't kill them. Amen. Uh, so, so my man, let me ask you a question, okay? Do you kill bugs? No, I do not. So, wait a minute. So he says he doesn't kill bugs. Why? Because I'm not a human exceptionalist. Okay, so he thinks even the parasite has value. So why are you saying we should kill not the parasite? The parasites. My I'm friend is such a hypocrite. He's such a hypocrite. Now, let's break down the argument. Okay, that's good. Let's break down the pagan's argument. Okay, now his shirt says that, pagan pride. Now, we see, we see what kind of mindset that the pagans actually have. That's a strange thing. Now, now, just to break down the argument, it is this guy's a great listener, by the way. Okay, now this guy right here, he can kind of, he can break down the arguments. He can see the logic behind these things. I've noticed that. Okay, so my man here says this. Okay, he says this: human beings in the womb are just parasites. Okay, he says we should be empathetic towards all things, including parasites. But he also says abortion is acceptable because the human being in the womb is a parasite. I call that hypocrisy. I call that inconsistent at best, right? Well, now, just from a logical standpoint, can we say that? Well, it is. Yeah, it is. It is. No, it's actually very logical. You didn't follow it. We'll say it again, okay? It's wrong to kill parasites, according to him. The human being in the womb is a parasite. What's the logic? Therefore, it's okay, not okay to kill. But he does the opposite. Yeah, he does the opposite. Does that make sense? But it's my body. It's no, it's not your body, man. The body that you kill. Wait a minute, you said it's a parasite. Yeah, in That's not your body. body. In your body, but it's and not I'm your body. body. See, it's in her body, but it's not her body. It is my body. It's not your body. Not the, not the so-called parasite that you're killing, ma'am. That's not your body. The point is this, ma'am. Every human being has value. Every human being has life and worth. That's why a Christian can say that. That's why I can say racism is, is, is wrong. Racism is evil because every human being is made in God's image. No, ma'am. So every human being made in God's image. Did you have a question? Yeah, you. It's okay. I mean, you're on the spot. You got a spotlight on you right now. Well, now, when you say good, my man, let me ask you what that means. Okay? When he says he's good, is anybody else out here good? Okay. Now, let me ask you a question. I don't mean to be, um, what's the word? Um... Um, invasive, okay? Is it true that every person who just raised their hand, every person who just raised their hand has also told a lie? Have you ever told a lie? All the time. Okay, now a good person does not lie. We got to get that straight. Okay, if you're a good person, you don't lie. Let's tell the truth. That's just common sense. Right, let's tr exactly. Let's tell the truth. So that was another lie whenever he said he's a good person. Whenever you say you're a good person, you're actually lying because there's no such thing as a good person. Nobody. None is good. No, not one. 
Let's speak about the true God, L. Ron Hubbard. <laughs> Go ahead, speak up, sir. L. Ron Hubbard is the true God. There is no hell. Will you get my water over there? It doesn't mean you're with me. The L. guy's Ron not with Hubbard me, but he's doing a good deed. was a black man. And his real name was L. Ron Poyo Bembe. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Now, now, students, that doesn't mean that my guy here is with me. Doesn't mean he, he endorses what I do. You don't got to go stone him. You don't got to find out where he lives and beat down his door. of Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, ma'am, are you ready to ask your question? Turn that poop. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Turn wait a minute. That poop Can everybody hear him? Now, now, guys, Turn guys, that poop your classmate's going to speak. Don't, your classmate's going to talk in a minute. Can everybody hear her okay? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Make sure everybody can hear you, ma'am. Can everybody hear her? Yeah, every, we can hear her. Wait a minute, can you hear her? Okay, now, now here's the question, okay? What is truth? What is truth, ma'am? Good to see you again. What is truth? Who said that? My man! You know what? This is this is a great dude. I'm serious. Now, now nobody's actually ever given the technical definition of truth. A justified what kind of belief? Justified true belief, right? Now, can you tell me, can you can you prove to me that you exist? Um, now, ma'am, please don't, ma'am, please don't be judgmental today. I hear some judgments out in the crowd. You're being very judgmental. It's okay. Are you judging me? You're judging me. On your delivery, you're judging everybody else. She's judging my judging. Can I say something? Again, again, ma'am. I mean, I'm not here. Listen, listen, who said judging's wrong? No, God didn't say that. God says don't judge with a different standard than you're using. I'm judging with the gospel. I've been judged by the gospel. That's why I came to Christ in faith. No, no, no. I'm a messenger. Good question. Good question. Ambassador. Just a minute, sir. Go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, you're up. Really? I've been here for like 30 minutes waiting to talk. That's not a question. She's disqualified. Go ahead, sir. Wait a minute. Go ahead, sir. No, she's disqualified. She lied. That's not a question. No, no, no. Ma'am, you lied. You said you had a question and you didn't say the question. That's a lie. Okay, now, ma'am, when you say let her talk, okay, why should I? Because you're saying... Why, why should I let her talk? No, I'm just asking why should I let her talk. No, I want, I want, I want to let you talk. Okay. Right? Okay, okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. Okay, about what? Yes, I love that question. Okay, did, you, did everybody hear a question really? Because it, it is a good question. Pagan, did you hear the question? No, I did not. Actually. Can I call you that, or do you have another name that you prefer? I don't know what Pagan. Okay, now, okay, now, now, what she said. Well, sir, is, if I had my name right here, sir, I would let you call me Ryan. No, 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 my friend, he wants to be called by that. I am. You're right. I am. I'm judging. I'm judging. You're judging me. You're judging me. He's judging my judging. That's judging. Okay. Now, sir, excuse us. Please don't interrupt again. Okay. Now, now, ma'am, she has a good question. Okay. Now, her question is this: Why am I on this particular campus, as opposed to what campus, ma'am? Why are you on this campus preaching to us? I like that question. Yes. Are you trying to convince? Great question. Okay. First, your answer. Okay. First of all, you asked two questions, and that's okay. But she said that she had a question, not two. But that's okay. Okay. Now, ma'am, the answer to your first question is because God has decreed or sovereignly ordained from the very beginning of time and even before then that today would be the day that I show up on this campus. To preach what? Second question. Answer the second question to teach about truth. Because the truth will set you free. Truth is defined by what? What's truth? Then if you're talking about truth, a little while ago you quoted Sodom to tell a gay guy to go to hell. Well, actually that's wrong. That was Romans. And I didn't say to my gay guy right here to go to hell. No, and he can attest to that. Guy. See, that's why I have a video camera, by the way, students. Because we have very selective hearing out here. So that'll be on YouTube, man, that you actually lied about what I said. And we can, oh, we can review it. I'll blot you out, okay? But I actually can, yes, ma'am. Once you come onto public property, you lose all anonymity. Yes, sir, go ahead. Sir, I don't mean to like harass you. Okay, thank you. Last time you 
No, sir. Actually, you're wrong. See, this is again why we bring the camera out. I would never tell anybody you're going to hell because you're still alive. I hope God saves you. I hope you don't go to hell. I don't want that for you. Now, I read Romans. I didn't, I didn't talk about Sodom. I didn't read Sodom. So what would you say about Romans? I read Romans. Would you like to hear it? So she's getting mad at me for reading the Bible. Notice that. Well, okay? I'm getting upset with you reading the Bible given that the English translation of the Bible is not the original context. Well, it comes from the Greek too, man, which I've also read. And if I spoke Greek out here today, I don't, now tell me if I'm wrong, I don't think a lot of you would understand that. I mean, the Greek also kind of comes the Bible too. Okay, the Greek, actually the word in the Greek is actually more emphatic than unnatural, which the Bible calls a, a man and a man relationship, or a woman and a woman relationship. No, I'm not saying it, like historically speaking, this, this is what I learned. The Greeks adopt Christianity, but they also fucked up translating it. Based on what, sir? Because they're fucking assholes and they're Wait, don't, don't, no, no, I'm serious. Have a, like a serious talk, man. No, no. You're I'm throwing the ad hominems sorry, out very, because you don't like what they like transmitted, like which we have in the English. I'm I mean, you're out here. Just talking about history, sir. Okay, what? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, let's hear it. Now, sir, according to what historical document are you you're referring to when you say that? I'm not looking at a document. I didn't think so. It didn't sound like it. It sounded like you were talking out of the side of your mouth, which is actually untrue. No, sir, I can talk loudly, too. But you come from That's Clovis, good. Right? I'm glad you're talking loudly. And in Clovis, I was an unbeliever. In fact, Clovis is actually a very godless place, unfortunately. I know. I know. Because they suck. I'm sorry. I've been there multiple times. I've lived What's your point, sir? Did you have a point about what we're talking about today? No, I'm trying to make a point that the, the Greeks fucked up translating the Bible too. According to what, sir? According to history. Okay, what document are you referring to? I'm not looking at documents. Doesn't sound like it, sir. So are you just trying to what invent history? history are you, I didn't make the claim, ma'am. Okay, I'm looking at the Bible. This is a document, okay, but it comes from God. So that's not a good translation. Satan. Call your pastor up. Let me talk to your pastor. I don't know my pastor's name. What church do you go to if you don't even know your pastor? Some in Park Church, my dude. You don't know your pastor's name? No, we have a different pastor like every other fucking week. Well, what kind of church is that? It's not a biblical church. It's not a biblical church. What's up, my man? Can you read? No true Scots in body. Can you read First Corinthians 6? Exactly. That's exactly the verse I was bringing up. Now, I was reading Romans. This is another verse in there, okay? And I want you to read 9 through 12. Yeah, I would, I would love to. Is there a particular reason you're standing above us like that? Do you not know that the unrighteous will not... Hear him. No, seriously, hear him. Hear him, guys. Please. Please, hear him. Hear what he's going to say. Okay. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Now, the question is, who is the unrighteous, right? And he gives us a list. Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. Here it is, my, my friends, my Clovis guy. But hear him, hear him okay. out. He's going to attack you, but hear him out, because Jesus himself stood for this. Go. Nor men who practice homosexuality. Hear him Nor men who practice homosexuality. Continue. Nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers, which is basically people who steal money, <laughs> will inherit the kingdom of God. I got a Continue. question. And such were some of you. And I was included in that list. Were you included in that list? Such were some of I can say such was I. I mean, I was, I was included in that list. Okay, the last verse. <clears throat> but you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So in other words, He's writing saying, this to Christians. So that, He's writing this to yeah, Christians. Exactly. So as long to a as church. Christ, exactly. Exactly. Well, you'll be forgiven. Exactly. So my two brothers over there. They're not your brothers if you're a Christian. Hey, I'm a Christian too. They you're not a Christian. If you're a practicing homosexual, you're not a you're not a Christian. Why? Because they say you're not a Christian. Because they say. Wait, I got a question. Got a question. No, we don't believe in the same hey, God. Yes, we do. The, the God you believe in is made up. Hey, wait. he's a God that I just read the verse, my man. I just read this. Exactly. I just read it. Exactly. In the you can't practice this stuff and be a Christian. No, no, no. Who are you to My say man, they haven't said every one of these people that were doing that have been, they're that? no longer living that way. They're not, they're not living that way. The Christians who actually have been oh, delivered so from that. Don't commit idolatry. Not this guy. Idolatry. No, they don't live in it, my friend. They don't live in it. They're practicing openly doing that. So you a Christian wouldn't do that. A true Christian, he would be ashamed of it. He would be mortified. He would say, Lord, I'm struggling with this sin. Have mercy on me. I'm struggling with it. Not out here flaunting it. And like you, my friend, trying to excuse it. I'm not trying to... I mean, really, man. You're I'm doing the work the of Satan when you do that. that you're on. No, no, no. Now, let me read you this verse, and you tell me what this means, okay? You ready for this verse, my man? Sure. Okay? Drop it down. 
They profess to know God. You ready? They profess to know God, but they deny Him by their deeds, by their works. They profess to know and, God, but, but they're out but here denying Him by the way they live. About I mean, come on. Exactly. Exactly. But they are, my friend, that's like Bruce Jenner saying he's a, a female and he's a male. Oh my God. Okay. That that's, is. That's, it that's is. Totally different. No, it's not a totally different topic yes. because it points out that I can say something with my mouth, but it doesn't make it true. But he's still I can straight. say I'm a, I'm a rock Jenner today, but it doesn't mean so it, he, I'm a rock. Good. Okay, Bruce Jenner is clearly a man. It doesn't matter how many surgeries he goes through. He's still a man. But he's still straight. Okay, he's, well, what, yeah, but he he's still a man. But we're man. talking about just because you say something with your mouth. That's why earlier we're talking about atheists. You've heard that. Okay, right, look, we say atheists oh, don't oh, exist. May I, Agnostics I, don't oh, exist. Do you got something to say against that, my friend? Let's hear it. You got an argument for an atheist? Are you an atheist? Anybody out here an atheist? Liars, liars. <laughs> You're suppressing the truth you know about God. Now, my friends, this is what I would do if I were you. Okay, If I was in her shoes, okay, and I love sin, and I knew the God of the universe existed, but I didn't like him to exist, because I have a conscience, and I'm trying to get rid of my conscience. Okay, if I was in her shoes, you know what I would do? I would try to say with my mouth, I'm an atheist, to somehow deaden my conscience so that I can live in sin. That's what she's done, unfortunately. That's, but Christ can give you a new mind. Whenever, like the verse we read, whenever Christ saves somebody, it doesn't mean you continue living in sin, my man. What kind of, what kind of God would do that? Hey, I'm going to save you, but you're going to have no change. You're not going to be different. You're going to keep doing the way what you used to do. My friend, that's what you're doing, though. Your salvation is not going to be provoked. It doesn't justify that we continue to live in sin, but it does tell you that you will inherit the kingdom of God. My friend, notice he says this in past tense, such were some of you. Such were some of you. That means in the old days, that's how you were. You used to be that way. You're no longer that way. Did you not hear the verse? Such were such were some of you. If I say, hey, you know, you used to be 12. You, We all used to be 12. Such were some of us. We used to be that way. Doesn't mean that we're still 12. Doesn't mean we're, you know, does that make sense? Now, I know a lot of you like myself. I mean, we had public education. We didn't really learn how to read. I know it gets even worse when you go to college. Okay, I know that because I went through the system. I'm not putting you all down. But I'm saying this, okay? One of the things that God does whenever he saves somebody is he actually gives them a desire to learn about his word, first of all. But to learn about truth. To not just kind of flippantly throw something out there like this lady's doing and, and you were doing. To say, hey, you know what? I feel like being an atheist because if I'm an atheist, I can live however I want to live. So what evidence do you have that God's existence is true outside of the Bible? Great question. Bible well, what do you mean outside of the Bible? The Bible is a claim. It needs evidence to back it up. Okay, I have the same proof that you have that God exists. Oh, no, I don't have any proof. <laughs> what okay, is that proof? The fact that, my friends, okay, if you don't believe in God, where do the laws of logic come from? Go ahead. The laws of logic. Apart from God, where do they come from? Go ahead. What's that? The laws of logic come from a foundation of philosophy. Of no, they don't. That's, a, that's an error. No, I, I agree that they... they Right. No, no, no. They noticed what they were. They observed the laws of logic. But the laws of logic were already there. They did not invent the laws of logic. The laws of logic is how we think. The laws of logic is what allows us to form rational sentences and thoughts, even before we say them. Isn't that like influenced also by your parents and like your upbringing? Not the laws of logic. No, because the laws of logic, man, they're unchangeable. Now, and I would also say this, okay? Are you saying, who out here says, well, since we've never seen God, therefore he does not exist? Would you say that? I would say that's an argument that some people make. What about you? I don't necessarily believe that, but okay. that's because that's good. Because, because when it comes from when it comes to the laws of logic, okay, nobody out here has ever seen the laws of logic. The laws of logic are not empirical. Yes, they are founded by people. They're not founded by yeah. They are found by people, but they did not in, the people did not invent the laws of logic. Yeah, they did. People needed a way no, the laws of logic. My friend, that, that makes no sense. That makes no sense. Apart from the laws of logic, you can't even think rationally. So how can you say they thought rationally about the laws of logic that they invented? Apart from the laws of logic, my friend, they don't think rationally. So when, when did I tell you that they think rationally? Well, my, everybody does. That's how we're able to communicate right now. Well, and it, you know what I'm saying. We're able to form sentences anyways that we kind of understand. 
even if it's irrational. Like someone saying I'm an atheist. That's irrational. That's irresponsible. Okay. Agnostics are in the same boat. Okay. They don't. They don't. Yeah. Because because at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're suppressing the truth that you know about God. You're trying to excuse. You're kind of like Adam. Now I don't know if anybody's read. The, uh, Have you read Genesis? I'll take your question in a minute. So in Genesis, what happens is is Adam sins against God, and whatever what Adam does after he sins against God is Adam hides behind a tree whenever he knows that God is going to show up. He's hiding behind a tree. And whenever God does show up, God has to call out, Adam, where are you? Because he's hiding. He doesn't want to come out. That's what you're doing, man, whenever you say you're an agnostic. The reason Adam was hiding was because he knew he was guilty. As opposed to saying, coming up to God and saying, God, listen, I confess my sins. Adam could have done that. Adam could have said, God, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I violate, I've broken your law. Have mercy on me. But instead of doing that, man, that's talking about prayer, not preaching. Try again. Instead of doing that, okay, it's, ma'am, okay, if you want us to read it, we can. This happens on every campus. Try to be original next time. Okay? Oh, so you're insulting me now. Yes, I am. Try to be original. Okay, if you're going to try to stump the preacher, if you're going to try to twist God's word, come up with a new one. But, well, they tried to stone him, my friend. They tried to stone Jesus. It doesn't mean Jesus was like a sissy guy. You know? Jesus, hey, the Jesus of the Bible, my friend. See, the Jesus that this guy wants, my friend, I don't think the Jesus you believe in exists. You want the shampoo model kind of Jesus. Is that the kind of, he wants to sissify Jesus. He wants the effeminate Jesus. That's no, not the Jesus in the Bible. Go ahead. Jesus. You think being feminine is bad? Of course, effeminate. If you're a man, it is, yeah. Oh. Yeah, effeminate. If you're a man, you don't want to act like a woman, right? I mean, that's because why? God didn't create you that way. Okay? God created you either male or female. What's that? What traits do you describe to femininity? You can tell. You can just tell. I wouldn't say you're effeminate. I don't think it's qualified by long hair. I would say that. I mean, when you know, when you when you know, you know. When you know, you know. What's up, my man? He uh, defined free will. We'll talk. That's a good question. Did everybody hear that? That's a great point. Do we have free will? Well, what do you? Because because my friends, I don't know. I'll, let me get down here. Just remind me. No, you're good, man. Now, can everybody hear this question though? Okay, he's talking about free will now. Okay, now, now what the Bible teaches, Christ himself teaches that everyone who sins, they are a slave to sin. They don't actually have free will. They're enslaved to sin. They're in bondage to sin. Well, my friend, no, the, not, Christ has paid for all my sins. Yes, I would say yes. But, but here's the thing. What's the difference? What's the difference? A Christian doesn't live in sin. A Christian isn't going to habitually sin. I'm saying habitually, no, because I have a new nature. I have a new nature. So that means that God gives me a new nature so that the sin I used to live in. Does that mean you're infallible and he's paid for Great question. yours, but he didn't foot the bill for exactly. everybody else exactly. here? He foot the bill for everyone who believes in him. Can I have my consent to be film formed since this is going on YouTube? Well, is this, ma'am, when you come on, on a public property, you lose all anonymity. If you're going to make that argument here, you need to go make that argument with the city police who record you every time you go through a stoplight. Yeah, but they're not Say, posting that thing to personal accounts. Who says I am? You just did. No, actually, I can't. If, as long as I'm not making money, ma'am, I don't think I can make money off of this. I really, and I wouldn't try it. I know you're not going to monetize your videos. Well, you can check us. You can do that. Christ in the Wild Ministries. Christ in the Wild Ministries, YouTube. You're violating the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act of 1973. That's why coming out to a college campus and reporting them without the consent. Doesn't quite work that way. Doesn't quite. Now, students, it doesn't quite work that way. New Mexico is a one-party state, which only, which means that only one party has to consent to being recorded. Okay, and you are in public property, sir. You're, you're. I mean, this property is owned by, by taxpayers. Okay. And, and yeah. So, so it means, sir, that you don't have your. Whenever you come here, okay, it doesn't mean that you, you don't have the same rights that you would if, like, you were in your house. Okay. So did you come here just so you could film us? No, I came here to preach Christ. I started recording again, like I said, because you, because in I, fact, she was the one that told lies about what I said. So that's why we record, why I, because no, of students like you. I, yeah. Does that make sense? That's why you started filming? You were filming when Christ I in the Wild Ministries. Yes, ma'am. So, right now. Okay, I'm just trying to follow along. I'm a little bit lost. 
Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. And you know, I appreciate see, this. You've been really great out here. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm serious. Okay. And then you're like, but Christian sins, but they don't do it habitually. Right. Good question. I'm following that, so then like, okay. so sometimes you accidentally sin, but you're still going to be forgiven for that. So. Okay. Well, no, here's the thing, okay? And that's a great question, because what happens is when Christ dies on the cross, okay, 2,000 years ago, Christ paid for every one of my sins and every one of the sins of those who, just a minute, sir, just a minute. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm sorry. Let me know when you're done, sir. Are you done? No, I'm not done. Okay, keep going. I'm sorry, ma'am, that he's interrupting. Unbelievable. These guys are unbelievable over here, isn't he? I mean, this guy's the worst one, and he's actually a professor of Christ. That's sad, man. You know, last time I checked, last time I checked, only, only demons try to interrupt the gospel. Okay? Only t last time I checked, my friend, only the demons try to interrupt the gospel. Only the demons try to interrupt the preaching of the cross. So I'm starting to get confused about you, my man. Are you actually a Christian? Yeah, I am. Based on what? The fact that I, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, that I've been baptized, that I go to church weekly, and that I try to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Are you a Christian? I mean, that's just, I mean, that's how we know. Look, we know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going back to your question. Wait, wait, let me answer that one because it's a good question, okay? So as a Christian, Christ has paid for all my sins. He's paid for all my sins, okay? Now, what that means is because God has saved me, I have a new nature, and so I don't want to sin anymore. I live my life. I try to follow Christ. I live, but here's the thing. When I do sin, I have an advocate. Now, what's an advocate? A representative. I have a mediator. I have one who has died for me in my place. So my sins in the eyes of God, I'm no longer a sinner. I'm righteous. Okay? So that's why in thanksgiving and out of gratitude, I'm not going to live in sin. I'm going to try to do my best not to sin anymore. I have an advocate with the Father. I mean, Christ has given me this, this beautiful gift of salvation. I'm not, going to, I'm not going to flaunt my sin. I'm not going to live in my sin anymore. I'm going to have a new nature because of the power, because of the power of the Holy Spirit, because of the power of God. That's what I'm trying to say. And so that's a great question. But it does not mean that, that we become just perfect overnight. But it's true, though, that we do have a new nature. And that's the power that God gives us. So the question was brought up. I don't know where my man went because he brings up good questions. Um, yeah, I don't see him out here. Good to see y'all. That's a good spot. Y'all don't throw anything at me, though. Oh, I don't do that. Yeah, y'all wouldn't do that. I know. I know. Y'all see that? And, and I'm glad to have, like, a, it's always nice to have a, a, a pocket of people that really enjoy what I'm saying. They like me. You know, this is like my fan club over here, right? Yeah, we're fans. I appreciate that. Now, okay, at the end of the day, we're talking about free will, okay? Free will is an illusion. You don't have free will. Free will, we're either, there he is, my man, okay? So, so when we're talking about the will, right? The will is in bondage to sin. We always do whatever our nature desires to do. Right now, is it true that when I go to Burger King, I can pick the Whopper over the double cheeseburger? I can do that, right? But that doesn't mean even in that case, there's something that's that's driving that factor that's going to to, to determine the the Whopper over the double cheeseburger. It, well, that's included. That's included. But it can also be sociological. It can also be. Uh, it can also be. And, and this is the biggest thing. It's a spiritual bondage. No, when it comes to food, I'm not. Now I'm talking more like sin, or or even this about God. I mean, because you know, put it this way, okay? Now all of us, I'm sure, have done something, quote unquote, that's good. That's a good deed. You know, if you give somebody five dollars, let's say they're homeless, they're down and out, right? And you give them five dollars, who out here would not say that's a good deed? That's a good deed, right? That's a good thing to do. But what the Bible teaches is that whatever is done not in faith, okay? Whatever you do, if it's not done in faith, it is sinful. And the reason that is, is because what's the greatest, does anybody know the two greatest commandments? There it is. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself, right? Are you, are you loving your neighbor by calling the people hypocrites? Yeah, the, I am, sir, yeah. Uh -huh. and and I am, sir, yeah, I am. Because that's what people... Are you a, a demon that you're questioning that if I'm a demon? 
I am. I am questioning that. Yeah. But so, that's because. So is that loving thy neighbor? Is no, you're not. You're not loving your neighbor because the most loving thing you could do to your neighbor is tell them the truth. It's to show them love. Tell them the truth. And to show them love. Yeah, in love. Yeah, for sure. But are you showing me love? Are you showing him love? Yeah, because you maybe you've never love? heard this from your false ministers out there. Maybe they've never actually so said, are you "Hey, my minister a false well, if minister? that's what they're teaching, that's what I'm saying. You, if that's what they're teaching, they're a false minister." Okay. Now I don't know. Yeah, you, that's true. I don't want to throw your ministers under the bus, especially the RUF guy. I probably like that guy especially theologically okay but when it comes to the way you're talking right now yeah you're not loving your neighbor because your neighbor is hearing the truth about god right now and you're trying to disrupt that from, who? from me the word of god yeah yes ma'am because you're, but you're just a minute sir she's going to speak I, yes I interrupt yeah, oh, of okay. course that's loving this guy's been doing this all day yeah. hey i love my neighbor but you're not allowed to talk you're not allowed to talk neighbor hey neighbor you're not allowed to say anything okay now that's not loving his neighbor that's not loving his neighbor. That's not loving your neighbor. You're calling me out on that. I am, well, yes, when, sir. When, when girl, There's always one in the crowd. Here he is. When that girl was asking you if you could talk, if she could ask you a question, no, excuse, not excuse. There's there's always one in the crowd, unfortunately. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Okay. Yes, ma'am. That's a great question because what we're doing is 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 consistent with what God has said. Yeah, and so what, what the things that he's been saying, what he's doing, you know, the, you've read Genesis, right? Yeah. yeah, I thought you have, right? So, the, do you remember what God, what the, what the, uh, what the serpent tells Eve, the first thing that he tells her about God's word? Okay, okay. So what? So I'll help you out. Okay, he says, "Has God really said?" Okay, now God came and spoke directly to Adam. Adam probably relayed that message to Eve. She relays it to the serpent that this is what God has said, but the serpent twists what God has said and says, listen, did God really say that? He really meant this. So from the very beginning, the way that the devil works, okay, in his minions, and he twists God's word. So that's what this man has been doing. Now, I hope he's just confused about what the Bible teaches. I hope that. Okay, what's that, ma'am? Okay, again, what we've, okay, again, okay. That wasn't on the cross, man. Yeah, he did it. And God took him to judge out of love. He knew that it was for the better of Amen. Amen. That's right. Exactly. You're not far from the kingdom of God. Says this guy. Let her finish, says this guy. Who's been interrupting people all day. Amen. That's right. Yes, ma'am, it is, yeah. Yep. Now who out here has heard me say that, honestly? Wait a minute. Who out here? Who out here honestly has heard? This is why I record, because she comes out here and she actually twists what I've said. So if she's okay with twisting what I've said. What's to keep her from twisting what God's word has said? That's not love, ma'am. Christ says He's the only way. You know, God is very exclusive. God is very exclusive. No, ma'am. Have you read the Bible? Okay, can I read a verse? Can I read a verse to you? Wait a minute, I didn't say that. I don't know who's going to hell or not. Why would I say that? Don't come out here and lie. You know what's not loving your neighbor, my friends? It's when you come out and you lie about your neighbor. That's not loving, ma'am. So don't be a hypocrite today. You're like the other guy. Where is he? Go up there and do what she's doing. They're two-faced. These people are two-faced. Yeah, she's two-faced. Yeah, but what's the Bible say? See, at the end of the day, it's about what has God's word said. What about what? What's God, God's word? What has God's word said? You're coming up with your own ideas, your own imagination. The God you worship, ma'am. Do you like Joel Osteen? Do you like Joel Osteen? Ma'am, do you like Joel Osteen? She don't want to answer that question. That's good. You don't know. Praise God. Now, at the end of the day, okay. The question is this, what is God's word says? Now, my friends, I'm so sorry. You guys have been awesome. You guys have been patient. And I know one of you guys had a question earlier. I'm sorry we haven't gotten to it yet. Do you still have that question, sir? Yeah. Where are you posting this on YouTube? What's the Christ in the Wild Ministries. I'm not saying I'm posting this. You said that you're going to post it on YouTube. Like well, I said if it is posted, that's where it'd be. No, no, Christ in the Wild Ministries. Okay, okay. If I do, I do. I don't know. No, ma'am. Okay, you're not, you're not qualified. You're disqualified. You're a liar. Liars aren't allowed to answer questions. Okay? If, yeah, if you 
Uh, my friends, if you're a liar, yeah. Wait a minute, you're a liar too. This guy's a liar too. Any other questions out here from, now my man here's not a liar. Okay, any other questions out here from somebody who's not a liar? Ma'am, you bear false testimony today. You're, you're a false witness. Okay, that's one of the Ten Commandments. You shouldn't bear false witness, especially about your neighbor. Right, my man? Now, we're trying to talk about truth. Now, you have been great. You got another question? question. Just a minute, ma'am. Ma'am, your classmate's trying to speak. Is there like an age limit? So oh, like, great question. I spent like 60 years sinning, and then I was like, all right, I, but, but it wasn't great just question. like a do it as a yeah. thing, but I really was like, oh my God, all right, I want to accept Jesus in my heart or whatever. But you still do welcome to heaven. Like, yeah, I know. Yeah, but here's the problem with that. Yes, because the thief on the cross, on the, the day he was dying, he looked at the Lord and he said, remember me in paradise. And Christ does. Here's the problem though. Okay, we're talking about the will earlier. Okay, the problem is not just saying like a magical prayer at the end of your life and thinking God's good. Just a minute, man, we're talking. We're talking. Wait a minute, we're having a conversation here. How rude is that? I'm so sorry, do you act this way in class? No, sir. Well, good, because your grades would probably be better if you do act that way. Okay, now, just a minute, okay? So whenever, okay, people's wills are enslaved to sin. It's God who has to liberate your, your will so that you love Him and that you come to Him in faith. So in other words, if, if you wait until you're 60, you're just accumulating sin and wrath and you're accumulating this nature that does not desire God. You can't just stop all of a sudden and then desire God. And in, in other words, you, when you do that, that's God's grace to give you that power to do it. That's why the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't wait. Tomorrow's not promised. 60 years old is not promised to you. And we all know people who die when they're your age or my age. We know of them, right? And so the question is, why do we live as though we're going to make it to 60? We need to, we need to live with eternity in mind today. We need to get right with God today. But like if he wasn't exposed to the God beforehand. No, that's a good question, yeah. And that's why, yeah, exactly. So we try to bring the gospel to every creature. You know, what the Bible says, so what the Bible teaches is that everybody knows the one true God, but not everybody knows the gospel of Christ. So we've got to bring the gospel of Christ to the lost. So going back to the question that I think uh, the lady who left asked, what am I doing here? That's what I'm doing here on this campus. Okay, I know that many students here have not heard the biblical gospel, especially if it's coming from people like you and this guy. Okay, that's not the biblical gospel that they're hearing. Okay, the question is, what does God's word said about himself, about man, about what we must do to be right with him? Okay, and that is, it is simple. Have faith in Christ, believe in Christ. But belief is a supernatural gift that God gives you. So I would say cry out to God to give you a new heart, metaphorically, to help you believe. We need help believing. Okay, what's up, my man? You've been good, too. I appreciate you. I do. What evidence do you have outside of the Bible that the Bible is the word of God? What do you mean outside of the Bible, sir? This is my ultimate authority. So No, 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 let me answer that. Because whenever you use, whenever you talk about ultimate authorities, okay, when you appeal to the highest authority, you don't use anything else outside of that thing to appeal to it. Otherwise, that thing becomes the highest authority. So, so if I appeal to something outside of the Bible, that thing... With credibility. Yeah, right exactly, now, exactly. Right amen, amen, amen. So, so the reason why we believe God's word is because God doesn't lie, and God has exhaustive knowledge of his universe, okay? Any and kind of... comes from the Bible itself? Yeah, it does. So the Bible telling you that the Bible is God's word <laughs> absolutely proves Because it's my highest authority, yeah. Any time again, I'll try to explain it slowly, okay? Any time that you use, any time that you have a highest authority, and we all do, okay? We all have something as our highest authority. Whenever, you, you're, whenever you're referring to the highest authority, you don't refer to anything outside of that to verify the highest authority. Otherwise, sir, what you've done is you make the thing you refer to the highest authority. So, first of all, that's an appeal to authority. Second of all, it is an appeal to authority. You're right. Needs credibility. That's a logical fallacy. What, what is? Appeal to authority. That's the literal name of the logical but, fallacy. But, sir, what you're trying to say is that's the circular argument? It's not a viciously circular argument because I'm appealing to the highest authority. I'm not appealing to authority, sir. What I'm saying, when you're talking about a highest authority, that's different from the logical fallacy, which is an appeal to authority in general. I'm saying there is no other authority higher than God. Why would I appeal to anything else? I'm saying you need to back the Bible up with something other than the Based Bible. on, because wait, 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 wait. If I did that, sir, wait, if I did that, that would be giving that thing more authority than God's word. I'm not going to do that. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, because you're standing there, ma'am. So that's why, yes, ma'am. Wait a minute. No, you're a liar. You're disqualified. No, no, no. No, go ahead. 
So let's just engage in a quick thought experiment real quick. Okay. So I summon you worship those gods. Let's say Loki is I can too. Yeah, go ahead. Let's say Loki is the And he's trying to convince you that the Bible is true. Wouldn't Loki in the Bible say that the Bible is the word of God to convince you? Yeah. It, what, what, say, say, say it again. I'm sorry. What is this? Why is that belief above all others? Okay, great question. Because again, sir, because when God... evidence from within the claim itself make the claim true? Because again, when you appeal to the highest authority, you can't go outside of that authority and appeal to something else. But what if it isn't the highest authority and what if it's God's lying? the highest authority. That's what I'm saying. God doesn't lie. That's why that I appeal Bible, to God's right? word. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if the Bible is lying to you, wouldn't that be in the Bible's best interest? <laughs> but, but the problem that you're having, sir, is this, okay? Okay, the one true God. In order... When you're talking, if a God, if God lied, he would no longer be, li he'd no longer be God. In what sense? Back it up. Say that if God lies, God. Okay, well. Okay, it's. Sir, it's what we're talking about is the God of the universe. You know he's righteous. I know he's righteous. That's why we're, that's why we have a conscience. That's why we try not to sin. And whenever we do sin, we try to look for false religions like evolution to, to give us license to sin. And I did intentionally call that a, a religion. You're right. No, it's not a science. It's definitely not a science. Okay, give me an argument as to why it's a religion. Evolution? Because it's faith-based, not factual. So you're saying the objective observations that have been made... They're not objective, sir. There's no such thing as an objective observation. Every time a human being observes something, a human being observes something through the lens of his worldview. And if you have a worldview going into the, the observation that God does not exist, that's going to uh, that's going to influence the way that you observe whatever you're observing. So that's why when it comes to... Yes, but here's the thing, okay? When you're talking about something like that, sir, when you're talking about truth, What's truth? No, ma'am. What's truth? I'm pretty sure he already put it pretty well. Justified belief, or belief that is backed up with hard evidence that has been. So, so can you prove to me that you that you exist? Tell me. So, do you think you're? No, don't deflect it, my man. Prove to me that you exist. I don't think you, uh, I don't know if can you, you give me, can you give me demonstrable proof that you exist? Well, do you believe in empirical evidence? How are you not being a hypocrite? Well then, go ahead, shake my hand. I don't say that you, do, I, I'm not saying you don't exist. I'm proving to you that I exist, shake but, my hand. But again, going back to empirical evidence, okay, what about the laws of logic? Those are not empirical, and yet they also exist. Are you not going to shake my hand to find the proof that okay, I exist? Now, go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, okay, look. Did you feel offended by what she said? Genesis 6.15, who asked the... Genesis 6.15, are you sure? Anybody else offended by what this man has said? Anybody else offended? Yeah, I would too, because what are we talking about? We're talking about truth. We're talking about God's wrath. We're talking about God's cross God's that love? saves people. What's God's love? That saves people. Do you know what God's love yes, God, is? God's love means that he loves holiness so much that he will by no means leave the guilty unpunished. Exactly. And that's what do you mean Jesus, exactly? Jesus, I thought you don't like that. Jesus died in the cross as well out of love, didn't he? For God to love the world. Exactly. What's the condition? What? Whoever believes that whoever believes shall not perish, which means that whoever does not believe, what's the Bible say? John 3, 36, the wrath of God abides on him. Oh, we don't like that one, though. She cherry picks. Now, now um, yeah, here it is, Genesis 6. Now, now I'm serious, serious, serious stuff, okay? There's a lady in the back. She's been very patient. She has a question. She wants us to read Genesis 6, verse 15, okay? Now, it's kind of controversial. Are you sure? Okay, well, it's kind of controversial. You sure you want me to read it? Read all of it. Don't stop. Read it. I'm interested. Okay. Read it. Okay. This is new for me. Okay, Genesis chapter 6, verse 15. Okay, I'm kind of, I'm kind of embarrassed to read this, all right? Okay. Okay, it says this. Okay, it is. Here it comes. Here it comes. I'm serious. Wait, guys. Wait, wait, wait. Okay? I'm kind of embarrassed. All right, this is what it says, all right? This is how you are to make it. The length of the ark 300 cubits, its breadth 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. Now, do you think I don't understand. This whole world is fit into the ark, and you're telling me that the world is wrong? What? The dimensions are given. That's a red herring. What is she talking about? Sorry, let her go. You can't fit all the species on the ark. So you're telling us we're wrong to believe in the world. But the dimensions are given. What
What are you talking about? I'm saying there's so many animals, there's so many species that it's kind of hard to fit all of them. Like in this world right now, there's so many species that are... Yeah, but the ark wasn't built yesterday. Man, this happened a long time ago, and, and don't you believe in adaptation? Okay, so, so, well, we call it adaptation. No, we're talking about macro Darwinian evolution, neo Darwinism, naturalism. Okay, now, ma'am, I think what you're saying is this. Okay, you bring up a good point. Okay, but maybe there was some confusion. That's probably my fault. Okay, to clarify, we're not talking about adaptation. We're not talking about natural select. Well, actually, yeah. At, okay, we're talking about this. Okay. Supernatural selection. That's what we call it. Okay. Now, here's the question, though. Okay. Dogs and coyotes are in the same species, same category of species, right? Dogs, coyotes. They're in the same order, not the same species. Okay. So what's the what's what's the what's the main thing that they come from? What's it called? Canine. Genus. Canine. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Exactly. So whenever you have the ark, right? You don't have two dogs, two coyotes, two, what else comes, I mean, two chihuahuas, I don't know, right? You have two of that kind. Does that make sense? And and so that's what it's saying there. Oh, okay. So it's just like, right. But, like, we look different. and stuff like that. Right. That part of the whole evolution thing is like, right. Because they, they you can evolve. Thank you very much, ma'am. You can evolve within that kind of species. But what we're talking about that there's no way that you can call a science is macroevolution in the sense of species evolving into an entirely different kind of species. I'm not kidding you. I met a professor here. Okay, first of all, now students, I think some of you might have been out here, but what she said is this. Okay, first of all, she says that, okay, every human being came from a volcano. Secondly, now get this. Wait a minute. Secondly, she says this. There is no such thing as objective truth. Now, how can you say there's no such thing as objective truth and yet make the objective truth claim that we all came from volcanoes and she's a professor here. Don't worry, students. I told her she needs to either resign or basically get fired. Now, I know that's what you would want me to say because that's outrageous. Okay, go ahead, my friend. Why? That's why you're right. And so that's why I'm not going to name her names. I'm not even going to tell you what she looked like. Yeah, you can watch the video later. Christ in the Wild Ministries. Well, I thought you wanted me to. I'm confused now. Y'all said you wanted me to post it. I'm so confused. Okay. Well, this guy is still. Let's let's take this and then we'll go to yours. Yep. This isn't high school anymore, sir. Okay, this is in the playground. See, my man's confused. He thinks this is recess. Okay. My friend, this isn't recess anymore. But you know, when when I read scripture, it's just great. First John. 416. 1 John 416. Yeah, everybody listen. Everybody listen. Hey, it's, he's for real this time. This is the verse. This is the verse. 1 John 416. It's funny, they always just say, hey, just read that one verse so you can cherry pick it and take it out of context. No. That's all right. Hey, we'll read it. We'll read it. I would love. Can I do that? Okay. Well, you can't talk. You have to read it. Okay, I'm, I am going to read the whole thing. I love that. Okay. By this we know that he that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us his spirit. So he's talking to Christians. And we have been born again. He's given us his spirit. That's good news, right, man? I'm good to see you again. Okay, Christ has given us his spirit. We have the spirit of God, okay? And and we have seen and testified that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. So we have come to know and to believe the love that God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides... Isn't that what I've been saying? Oh, wait a minute. No, no, no. Here's the part you don't like. Here's the part he doesn't like. Here it is, okay? Whoever... Here's the part he wants cherry-picked out of the Bible. Okay, here it is. Ready? Here's the part he doesn't like. Whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. By this is love perfected with us, so that we may have confidence for the day of judgment, because as he is, as he is so also are we in this world I love that. now my friend what do you think it means to abide to abide in love what does it mean to abide in love but it also says that you confess your sins to Jesus I'll help him out okay that means that means it literally means a house it's like somebody in a house so you're abiding in this place you're not you're not leaving the place 
No, I'm not answering this guy because he's a liar. He's got a demon in him. I'm afraid he does. No, I'm serious. I think he does. <laughs> now that's the fakest laugh I've ever heard in my life, man. Yeah, that's the fakest laugh I've ever heard in my life. I'm sorry you feel that way. I really am. I wonder what, you know, whenever somebody laughs, especially like that, it's sad because you know that something induced that, maybe like fear, insecurity, maybe? Happiness? No, it's legit funny. Okay, well, nobody else thought it was that funny. That makes sense, right. Now, anybody else have any other questions? Okay, now, let's do this again, okay? I'm sorry for this guy, and I'm sorry for the other lady, that girl in the back, okay? But especially this guy. Okay, there's always one in the crowd. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to listen to this guy all day, interrupting you, making fun of, you know, people like, like you know, the Bible. Now, now my friends, okay, here's what I'm going to say. Okay, at the end of the day, look, I appreciate... Listen, okay, at the end of the day, I come to preach Christ. I pray, and I really do. I sincerely hope that God saves every single one of you. That's why I come out. Okay, I really do. That's about praying, ma'am. Don't be it. See, she's the same way. That's why I got to bring this out, because you guys, man, you guys twist the scriptures. It's about praying. Nobody out here has seen me pray. Oh, no, I talked to all the people out here. Yeah, I talked. She's been very nice. There's been a lot of nice students out here. Just not this guy. Just not this guy. Yeah. And so I appreciate a lot of the students out here. Most of you have been very good, very nice. I've appreciated the conversations we've had, the dialogue. I, I really have. This guy's really the only bad one out here. If we got rid of this guy, we'd all be, man, we have, we'd get a lot done. But Satan always has one. So, my friends, I'll come back out next week. Okay, don't worry. I'll be back out, Lord willing. Okay? So don't worry, I know you love me coming out. I'll be back next week. Um, I hope I hope on Tuesday. Okay, I hope Tuesday and Wednesday of next week we'll, we hope to be out. Okay? okay, I hope to be out, I really do. Okay, so it's really been good talking to most of you. Okay, so God bless, I really do hope, I hope that God blesses you with repentance, I do. And if you have any questions, okay, if you want more information about what we're saying, okay, we have cards, we have information, gospel tracks, come and get them. Okay, and so we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you Tuesday. Yeah, I'd love to talk to her. Talk to him. Talk to her. Will you show me enough? What day? You tell me when he wants me to be here or she wants me to be here, and I'll be here. No, I mean Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, because I don't want to be wearing this in my. Uh, Wednesday, I said Tuesday and Wednesday. Oh, they probably don't believe the Bible, anyways, my friend. Sir, will you okay. show me enough grace? No, sir, I'm not talking to you anymore. Okay, God bless you. I'll see you Tuesday, God willing. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Have a good day, ma'am.